Uh, hello there, everybody. Um, I often have uh, people ask me questions about my setup, and so I wanted to give a few details here that I haven't uh, given before. But um, everyone that watches my videos asks, uh, what kind of spinners do you have? And so what I've done here is just get a close-up of my um, box. And so I make all these by hand. Uh, it cuts the price way, way down, although I will tell you, I get a little obsessed about it. But you can see that I have many different uh, style lure bodies and pieces to uh, make lures. And then I find that, you know, it gets them down to about, oh, anywhere from 80 cents to a, to a buck, depending on what I'm doing with them. And what I like most about making my own lures is that I'm able to really um, customize what I want to do uh, in terms of color and blade style. But you get the idea of the constituent pieces. I mean, you've got some kind of um, blades um, available to be used. They come in all different sizes, uh, shapes, finishes. And, you know, this one's a little larger. You do have to pair these things out pretty well or else they'll wobble uh, and not make the greatest uh, finished uh, lure product. But I really like to stick around the eighth to a quarter ounce uh, variety. You need to buy some type of wire, make it, cut it, whatever. I buy the pre-tied ones and you can see the eyelets there. Usually requires a little bit of touch up but it works quite well. And then, of course, the variety of uh, materials that I'll use. This is uh, synthetic and real deer, deer hair and feathers. Uh, while I like the colors, I think they're the least durable. Uh, this stuff is the bomb in terms of lasting forever. These will outlast the life of the spinner by far. So that stuff's crystal flash. This is... Oh, I'm, if I remember right, it's a Gander, Mar a Gander Mountain or a uh, Cabela's product. I can't remember who actually stocks this one, but you see it comes in a variety of uh, different colors and availability. Oh, there's a Gander Mountain one that's nice and gold. And a Chrome one, which I use quite a bit, silver. And then another uh, gold type piece. One of my favorites is uh, making a Schmitty Lure Blue. Uh, and so I have a couple different purples and blues here that I like to mix and match in between. And a uh, bright yellow, so you get the idea of what's required. Uh, super glue is required. <laughs> I like the gold or the um, brush applicator for super glue. It just keeps it from getting on hooks and all over the place. Um, if you're going to do spinners that have a mounting that doesn't go in line but goes through the um, clevis. Uh, you need clevises, obviously. Other things that I have here, hooks. Uh, I really like the stainless 374 Eagle Claws. Um, and every hook that I put on a lure, uh, if it's not sharp, I sharpen it before assembly. Um, beads, any style of beads, sizes. All that is uh, something that's needed. You need beads to run the bearings on inline spinner blades and also for the clevises to have something to rotate um, freely on. I've tried these plastic kind of beads, uh, a no-go. Um, got these at a craft store somewhere, but these break uh, in the water over time. Even the blade or clevis will break them and without a bearing, nothing uh, works. Well, for a while I bought some uh, bare metal uh, bodies and I attempted to um, powder coat my own stuff with a little toaster oven. Uh, not worth the pain in the ass at all. Um, some of the other stuff in here that people might be uh, interested in. I do make some occasional bigger lures uh, for steelhead. And that's what these larger size uh, French blades are for. But you get the idea. Another important thing is thread. You always want polyester thread for your bobbin. 
uh, and this is some good uh, double strength polyester. You can see that not only is it quite a bit, 225 yards, but this is a real uh, sturdy uh, polyester thread. Uh, so I don't know the exact size of it, but it's it's extra thick. And this works great uh, for um, fletching the material on a hook and so on. And then I also do occasionally use uh, some plastics on lures and I find that it's a good change of pace. Um, I don't mind the moosted hooks. They're nice and sharp and they're uh, nice hooks, but they're weak. They're two times strong. I really like the 374 Eagle Claws because they are three times strong. They don't bend. They don't rust. You need some kind of basic uh, trash uh, component to, to make these lures. When I sit down, I'll actually um, sit here and fletch 25 or 50 lures and then I'll assemble them. You need some kind of decent uh, prehensile scissors or you'll end up uh, having having a bad time uh, trying to break line and having it fray. I also wanted to talk a bit about um, what I use for uh, reel setups um, because I do think that this is somewhere that people uh, they ask often. Um, and I don't know. Uh, Obviously, I'm, I read my uh, video comments more than anybody else, but if you read, you would know that the only um, uh, line that I recommend for trout fishing, uh, hands down, is um, hands down the best line out there is this type of uh, Power Pro um, braid. Uh, it's Power Pro 10 pound test is plenty. If I'm going with a bigger rod or steel head, I'll go up to 20 pound uh, test. But this stuff makes great knots. It loops the least. If you have problems with loops on your spinning reel, I have two suggestions. A, only by Power Pro. Uh, it is hands down the best. I've tried them all. Generic, fancy, poly polymer, uh, 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 monofilament substitute fluorocarbon, I've tried them all, and by far uh, Power Pro is the best uh, lasting line as well as behaving line. Uh, and it's strong as hell. You can pull up trees if you need to. This is an example of one of my more uh, preferred uh, reels. Uh, this is an ultralight size uh, reel. This one in particular is a uh, ABU Garcia SX5. This kind of reel holds um, about 105 yards or so of uh, braid. I remember braid is not thick line. It, it, uh, it's thinner than certainly the same strength amount of filament, but it, uh, it holds 110 yards, 115 yards or so. Uh, this reel is a relatively inexpensive reel. Uh, I think you can find these for about 35, 40 bucks. Uh, and this is a good reel. It is not going to last, if you fish like I fish, it is not going to last two seasons. It just simply is not durable enough. Um, but I do like the Cardinal SX5. Uh, my second favorite uh, that I've come across so far would be another ABU Garcia product, and it's actually on a rod here, so I'll bring it over. And what I really like about this rod is it's the SX10, uh, I believe, or 20. Uh, so it's a little bit larger. It holds more line. It holds about 135, 150 yards. And this SX10 is way more uh, sturdy. Uh, the extra body and the thin uh, bale here makes for great casting of the braid. Um, these reels are smooth. Uh, again, I'm not real satisfied that the um, actual reel itself is going to last a real long time. These ABU reels, if I have one knock on them, is that they are super sensitive to the water. Uh, if you drop your uh, rod into the water and the reel goes under, uh, you're going to have problems with a uh, ABU uh, Cardinal SX5 or SX10. Um, they can lock on you. Uh, I mean, they, I've completely had them seize up on the river. Uh, I always take two um, 
poles with me just in case something like that happens uh, and then many of you have commented oh how do you get that ruler <clears throat> on your rod see I get very hopeful here that I'm gonna come across a uh, 32 inch trout which uh, I on this reel uh, I actually hope not but but if I could find one right about 25 26 which is what I have caught as my largest brown uh, this rod is great uh, I wouldn't recommend expensive rods on a stream not because they're not good and worth it um, but if you uh, really like to spin fish and use these types of rods and this method of fishing you are going to fall on these rods, you're going to step on these rods, you're going to uh, put them through a lot of uh, punishment. Uh, submerged logs, overhanging limbs, all types of stuff. And hands down, the ugly stick uh, is the best for the money. Uh, you know, you can find these on sale sometimes for 20 bucks. I like the one piece instead of the two piece. Uh, some people have um, small cars and they like to uh, drop down uh, the rod or crack down the rod so that it can be easily transported. Uh, put your seat down, put it out the window, whatever. Uh, the two piece gets weak, I think. But you can see this rod is a uh, five foot ultralight, uh, two to eight pound or two to six pound uh, line action. I find the 10 pound Power Pro is perfectly suited for this style of rod. All the eyelets have a uh, uh, polymer coating on them. Uh, and this rod has great soft action and has just a little bit of a backbone. I have not had any trouble uh, setting hooks or uh, bringing any size trout or any size uh, obstacle. Uh, to command uh, with this with this rod, uh, so that combo I love, uh, but this combo is by far the best that I've come across yet. Now I haven't sprung for a $500 uh, Shimano Stratic reel or anything like that, but for the money, for 60 bucks, uh, I really like this President Fluger uh, reel. And again, I went with. Um, one model up from ultralight because I really don't like the ultra small uh, spools uh, that the tiniest of ultra uh, light uh, reels have so this is a 5.2 to 1 gear ratio it's the um, uh, 10 bearing Fluger president um, and this thing is so smooth casts so well uh, the spool actually is nice because it's intended to have braid installed on it so it has a pass-through that you can attach braid to instead of having to use duct tape or electrical tape on the spool to keep the whole braid spool from spinning. But this reel is so smooth, casts so good. Uh, I can't uh, provide anything but an overwhelming, glowing recommendation. Uh, looking at the braid uh, ratings, it's got... Uh, 110 pound or 110 yards at uh, eight pounds of braid. I can tell you that they easily fit a hundred pound or a hundred yards of um, Power Pro. So again, I always outfit these with the rod rule. Those can be had online. They're cheap. They're two, three bucks a sticker. Uh, all of these stickers have been on these rods now for three seasons. They don't break or uh, fall apart. Here's a pick of one of the lures with uh, plastics on it. I occasionally do modify uh, that and stick a plastic tail on, but uh, this gives you an idea of some of the gear. Uh, at some point I'll put another um, video up to um, uh, look at my vest, uh, how I carry um, rods and reels on the stream, and netting. Um, but I'm getting excited about early season and looking forward to uh, get out and get on the streams and do one of the most favorite things I like to do. So enjoy. Happy fishing.